again, like I announced, it's Q&A time. I got a couple of questions people wanted me to answer. Now, I have been promoting this Q&A for a couple of weeks, so I'm going to get a couple of interesting ones. You already know I'm wavy as hell. First off, on the Facebook side of the equation, a guy I went to school with, my nigga Deshaun, he actually asked me about what I think about the WWE PG era and how I think it should be handled. Well, <sighs> the way I think this sh situation should be analyzed is the PG era is a fallacious name for it. The problem isn't that the WWE is PG, since a lot of PG programs have a bunch of avenues for adult content. For example, the show Naruto, if you like anime or things of that nature, is pretty edgy at times. It shows a little bit of blood, and there's a lot of serious themes that are handled in that series, and it could be considered edgy at times, yet it's PG. So the problem isn't the fact that the WWE is PG. WWE was PG in the 80s, too. In fact, SmackDown was always PG. It's probably only the pay-per-views in Monday Night Raw that have changed. And during the Attitude Era, there was a gimmick where the first hour would be PG, and the second hour would be basically TV-14. So really, the PG isn't the problem. The fact is that the problem is that WWE is trying to be politically correct. It's trying to essentially appeal to the political aspect of the equation. I mean, that's why there's stuff like Linda McMahon's Senate run, Stand Up for WWE, this weird uh, wearing pink Susie G. Komen cancer thing, or Susie B. Komen, I don't know the name, but uh, there's the anti-bullying activism, there's the fact they're trying to politicize Darren Young coming out the closet. They're trying so hard to make the WWE a milk toast politically friendly company and it has a lot of downsides there's a lot of bad consequences for that because heels can't be badass they have to be kind of chicken shit guys that are low on testosterone. They can't really do a lot of crazy stuff. They can't be like Triple H during 2002 to 2005 or even in the Attitude Era where he was making people bleed. He was hitting people with sledgehammers. There were chair shots to the head. I think uh, Triple H versus Stone Cold Steve Austin in No Way Out 2001, that was probably his magnum opus, in my opinion. That should have been a five-star match. I don't know what Dave Meltzer was thinking when he made that a four-and-a-halfer. Give him an, you should give him another half of a star, because he was on his A-game for the first half of 2001 before he had to get put out for injury. So we... We had Cena in 2003, and Cena was badass as shit. We can't have guys like that being badass anymore. Let's take CM Punk when he had his face run in 2012, and then he turned heel after one, the 1,000th episode of Raw. He all of a sudden went from being this badass who can take on anyone to this watered-down... Uh, 
chicken and shit that was scared of everyone. He never fought cleanly and won cleanly because he couldn't do it all of a sudden. That shit doesn't make any sense, but again, the program is too politically correct. There's so many avenues that they're denying. I mean, seriously, they have Ryback as a heel being a bully instead of being a powerhouse animal like a Goldberg or something of that nature or, or a Brock Lesnar during 2002. So, honestly, I think that WWE should stop trying to appeal to the political side of corporatism and their corporation and should just focus on trying to make money and that's it. Normally, I don't like when businesses only have the goal of making money. But for WWE, this is essentially what they should stick to for now. Because trying to beat this political program is pretty dumb. I mean, they already deleted most of their Divas videos in late 2012 or early 2013. Any video that had Divas doing anything kind of raunchy, they deleted that shit. They pretend a lot of things in the past didn't happen since it's too real. No one's going to mention Benoit. No one's going to mention the late Owen Hart's death. No one's going to remember the incest angles. No one's going to bring that shit up. That shit was weird during 98. But that's just how it is. The second question I got was, have I ever thought about switching genders or races? I've been asked this question before in 7th grade, but no. To put it succinctly, no, I haven't thought about switching genders or sexes or anything like that. I mean, I'm, I like the way I am, for the most part. And I really like the testosterone that I have, the good one and the bad ones too, for the most part. As for the transracial element of it, I didn't even know you could do that. I mean, I'm sure Michael Jackson tried, but seriously, what the fuck? It's not in my interests. Like, let's say... The only avenue I could think of going is probably making myself look more Aryan, and that's not even in my interest since I'd end up looking like that nigga from Nickelback, and that's not what I want. And I could probably pull it off since I got the broad shoulders, things like that, but no. No. Second question, what is my favorite mythological animal? I'd say my favorite mythological animal would be either a centaur or a taurus. Most mythological animals come off as anthropomorphic hybrid beings. Mermaids, uh, all those astrological animals. I'm sure it's in that uh, Greek mythology, that Greco-Roman stuff, the Scandinavian mythology. Hmm. Yeah, it's going to be a toss-up between the Taurus and the Centaur. I'd much prefer a Taurus since I'm a Taurus, but the bold thing kind of looks cool, because I remember playing the first Final Fantasy, and... The first kind of real dungeon with the earth crystal in it. In that dungeon there was a centaur. I mean not a centaur, a taurus. And those things look tough, man. Like, and there's also Ifrit that kind of reminds me of a taurus. Loosely. It's, it's way different though, but the similarities make it look so cool. Ifrit is so badass. In third place, I'd probably put something like Cthulhu, but no. Nah, it's nowhere near my entrance for the 
Taurus. That bull. That looks tough. Shit looks like a tattoo right there. If I was into that kind of stuff. And then I went to Twitter and kind of asked for Q&A questions. And what I got was no from, I think, Emma. But I, could, I said I would probably stretch that response into a 15-minute video. I've already exhausted... 10 minutes because of the first question. First question kind of took me six and a half minutes. But other than that, I think I'm satisfied with this QA. I was expecting a lot more questions, but then again, this is Mr. Wonka 7. I could make a fucking 15 minute video with one question. Because my fucks are not being given. So, what can I probably say about that? No. Well, I guess I got rejected. Anyways, Mr. Wonka 7. I'd ask you guys to respect the king, but... Considering what the holiday represents, uh... And what the next holiday is going to represent, I'd rather have you guys... Figure... All that shit out on your own and hop off the Wonka dick. So...